Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brandy and this is Brandy Latrice Reads. Today we're going to go over all the books that I finished in the month of January. Three of the books I read in January counted for Medievalathon and then the other two books I read for Medievalathon I read the first week of February. The first book that I finished in January was Assassin's Fate by Robin Hobb. I probably have only posted three videos on this channel and I have managed to talk about Robin Hobb in every single video I have posted. I love her writing. I love her world. This particular book, um, as I said in my previous video, I can't give a synopsis for this particular book because it is the 16th book, if I believe, in her entire um, realm of the elderlings world. I will say this book broke my heart. I... <laughs> Anybody who really knows me that's watching this is probably going to laugh at me. I'm probably going to get a bunch of text messages, but I literally started crying at work and had to post in a Facebook group, um, a realm, a realm of the elderly Facebook group that's on face, a realm of the elderly Facebook group that's on Facebook, obviously. Um, I had to post in that group that my heart was broken and I love books i love reading and i love reading community so much that that is the one place where no one judged me like i didn't even have to tell them what scene i was on they all knew what i was talking about they were all there for me and i got over it a little bit these books are absolutely amazing her world building her writing i mean i'm pretty sure if you heard robin hobb you've heard quite a number of things she's not for everybody but I can honestly say that majority of the people like the books. The books are really, really slow. They're really, really slow, but her writing is just amazing. The world building is awesome. Character development. Um, I think I've mentioned it, mentioned. I think I've mentioned this in a previous video. Also, you will start the book with a character, and by the end of the series, end of the book, the character has truly developed and adapted based on the things that they've been to, through in the book. And Robin Hobb is excellent at showing you this change gradually to the point where you almost don't, you almost can't pinpoint exactly when the character changed or how the character changed, but the changes make absolute sense to what the characters have been through. This book is so good, especially if you've read all the books up until this point. There's so many characters that come from so many different of uh, um, her spinoff series. Not the spinoff series because they're all part of the same world. But there's so many characters from Live Ship Traders. There's so many characters from the Rainwater Chronicles that show up in these books in so many different ways. That in this book, there you love, at least I, I loved half of the characters. Like It was just so cool seeing characters I haven't seen since I read Live Ship show up or... Some of the characters that I loved in um, the Rain Wilds and show up in ways where it's just, it makes sense how they show up. That's my favorite character is a character I can't even name <laughs> because it will spoil it and I don't want to spoil that. So I'm not going to say it, but one of my favorite characters ends up being um, one of the additional characters in this book and it is just so amazing. I don't know if I said it earlier, but I gave this five out of five stars. Awesome book. The second book I finished in January was Tyrant's Throne by Sebastian de Castell, which was another five-star read for me. It was amazing. I, again, can't go over the synopsis of this book because it's the third book in the series. But the first book in the series follows Falcio, Brasti, and Cats. They are great cults. And it's it starts off with them a couple of years after their king has died. And their ultimate mission in life at this point is to complete a quest or mission sort of that their king sent them on however no one really knows exactly what the mission is um and when the king died there was there was i think a hundred great coats and each one of them got a certain part of the mission like he gave them all a secret and none of them knows what the other one's secret is and none of them knows ultimately what the main mission is and we followed them as they tried to navigate how to complete this mission without him around in a world where a majority of the people don't even believe in gray coats. Um, and it's funny. The, the, 
The characters in this book are hilarious, especially Falcio, who is ultimately my favorite character. It follows them as they try to stay true to what they believe in, and that is the law and that is fairness in a world where no one else really believes that. And so a lot of horrible things happen. A lot of scheming happens. A lot of pain happens. A lot of death happens. And you follow Falcio as he try to hold on to his ultimate beliefs when every time he turns around there's something trying to break him and he's trying to remain fair and honest and true and loyal and and this is the book that i i love this book more for the fact that there is a point in the book where falcio really struggles with why do why am i why am i trying to be this good guy why am i sticking to these values when I am the only one, because I'm the only one still sticking to these values, um, I keep losing, basically. And he really struggles with that. And it made the book even more realistic. There were times in book two and book three where I felt like Falcio was good because it just, you have to be strong to go through some of the things he goes through without breaking. And I was, it was starting to be almost unrealistic to me. And then in this book, I I got what I felt like. Shh, I mean, it had to happen eventually because it's only so many times you can play the nice guy and keep losing. I mean, losing friends, losing people, all kind of things happen to Falcio. Um, and through the first three books, he really, really struggles, but he always holds on to fairness and, and, and the law and good and what his mission is. And, you know, we're not those type of people. And this is the book where Falcio is tested in a way that really makes him think, is it even worth it? And I really love that about this book. The next three books I read, I read for Medieval Adon. And so I'm going to quickly go over what Medieval Adon is and the books I read in January for Medieval Adon. So Medieval Adon is a readathon hosted by Holly Hart's book on YouTube. This is, I think, the third year, might be the third round, second year, third round. And I have participated in every round. I didn't have a YouTube channel, so I did most of my postings on Instagram, even though I suck at posting on Instagram. How Medieval Adon works is that there is a ranking system. And so at the beginning of the readathon, you start off as a prisoner. Based on however many books you read, you go up in ranking as far as your title goes. So zero books is a prisoner, one book is a peasant, two books is a squire, three books is a knight, four books is a noble, five books is a prince or a princess, six books is a king or a queen, and seven books is an emperor or empress. You have between January 10th and February 10th to read as many books as you can in order to climb up the ranks. I am happy to say that I read five books, which makes me a princess. Um, you also can choose a career. That was optional. It's not mandatory. Each round, she does something a little different. The first two rounds, you are reading books to gain armor to be a knight specifically. But in this round, you got to pick a career for you. Because I had most of the books I wanted to read already picked out, I kind of cheated and I picked a career that just allowed me to read the books I already wanted to read. Um, so I picked Taylor slash Seamstress. And there are five prompts. I completed every single prompt. The first level prompt for a Taylor Seamstress, Seamstress is Draper's Assistant. Read a book you're unsure about. The book I read for this prompt was Storefront by Jim Butcher. I am, which is my next book um, I'm going to bring up. I am following a read along with Mike from my book reviews and I really, really have come to respect his, like his reading taste, his judgment in books, like his, like his opinions of books, basically is what I'm trying to say. And he absolutely loves this. And I've been wanting to read this book for so long, like it's been on my shelf for two years, but I'm not really into detective stories. So I always thought I just probably wasn't going to like it, um, but I really did enjoy it. I read this book in a day. It was really easy. It, it a re really easy read. It was quick to get into. I liked the main character. Um, it wasn't 
the best book I ever read. But I can honestly see myself reading through this entire series in between some of the bigger books that I have. Because, you know, reading a lot of books that's this big and this dense, I, it's easily to get into a reading slump. So having books like this that I can fit in between some of the bigger books are just really nice. And like I said, I read this in, a, a, a it was like a day and a half, but so good. This book follows, Harry is a wizard. Um, and as the back of the book said, he gets called to go to this case to see um, if he can figure out if these two bodies that were found were killed with black magic because the detective on the case doesn't think that it looks normal. Like, it has to be magic involved. The detective knows about Harry being a wizard. Many of the other people do not. Some do. Um, and so Harry goes, and it's very clear that it was magic involved. And now Harry has to figure out who is doing this, why are they doing this, but he also has another problem in that if Harry is caught doing any type of magic, he could be in trouble with like the council. And so he also has to figure out who's doing this before anyone thinks that it's him, basically. Um, Harry is a funny character. This literally reminds me of watching, honestly, like Hawaii Five O or CSI Miami if it had wizards in it. If Steve-O was a wizard, this is what this will remind me of. I don't know why I might be the only one, but Steve-O from Hawaii Five-0, if he was a wizard, is what this reminds me of. And I have already bought the second book and I can't wait to read it. I'm probably gonna read it in March because I have too many books to read in February. The second level prompt is Weaver. First book in a series. For this prompt, I picked Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is the read along that I am, I am following Mike's from Mike book reviews. He is doing the entire 10 book series over the course of two years, I believe. This first book we read in January. The second book we have two months. Second book on to the 10th book, we have two months to read each. And so I really want to follow along because I really needed another big fantasy series to get into. I honestly couldn't even tell you what the book was about. I know that I loved it. Let's just say that there is about 300 characters in here, it seemed like. You don't ever know what's going on, but it's still interesting and intriguing, and I can't wait to get to the next chapter. I sometimes... See, when I read this, I followed one um, 10 Very Big Books podcast, and they do a podcast it's about a 45 minute podcast every two to three chapters and every time i would get to those chapters i would stop reading and go listen to the podcast and what i liked about the podcast is that it gave different points of views one of the hosts was a veteran i already read it multiple times the other host one of the hosts was a newbie but was loving it and one of the hosts was a newbie and was hating it and i loved hearing the different perspectives and why they each you know felt the way they felt about parts but the host that had read it multiple times was awesome at clarifying like some of the things that I was lost on. You do still get to the end of the book and you still don't know a lot about what's going on. Um, I mean, characters were literally introduced the last chapter or two or they were like brung back up after not being around. Um, the book is crazy. Like, I can't really tell you what it's about because I'm still completely lost, which I heard from many people that read this, that that is something that's going to happen. Like you're probably not, it's going to take like the second or the third book for you to really start to understand exactly what's going on. The third prompt is Embroiderer, a book embossed or foiling on the cover. For this one, I read A Thousand Shits by, La by Natalie Hayes. Um, I Besides, besides Assassin's Fate, I can honestly say this is probably my second favorite book of the month. This book follows the women that were affected by the Greek and Trojan War. And this is, um, at first I thought this was going to be just the aftermath of what happened after Troy fell and the women, but it honestly flashes back and goes to women that were affected before this even happened, during this and after this. Every chapter follows a different female character and it tells the story from their perspective of what it was like during this time or how they were affected um, by this time some of the chapters let's be honest the characters were not that interesting but it was still fascinating to read 
the story from their point of view. And then they got to certain characters where I honestly could have used an entire book. In fact, one of the characters, and I do not remember her name, it was the daughter of Agamemnon, I, re I believe. I believe there's separate stories written specifically about her, and I, want, I really want to read them because that entire story just fascinated me. But but that because that entire story just fascinated me i don't know if you know anything about that but apparently um i believe it was agamemnon he was ordered by a god to kill his most beloved daughter or one of his daughters um because he portrayed a god or he did something um that offended the god and he did it and it's this is the story of her and how she loved her father and she just the moment she realized she was being betrayed by her own father. It was just, that chapter in this book was just so, like, powerful. Like, honestly, the other the other perspective that I love the most, honestly, was Penelope and her letters to, um, who was, it? see, I'm bad at names. I don't even know why I'm even attempted to. Um, I don't know why I'm attempting to remember names, but her letters to Odysseus. Um, and if you know the story of Odysseus, how he gets lost on his way back from Troy home and he ends up not making it home for like 10 or 15 years or something like that. And it's like, it's told through the, her letters to him over these 10 years, asking where he's been and recounting all the stories she's heard of, heard of what he's doing. And Penelope is a character, but I, I, lo I loved that. Like that was the most fascinating thing to me. But every chapter is it's honestly good. Like, it tells a story from some of their daughters, some of the wives, some women who was just captured and sent to slavery. It is really, really good. I absolutely love this. And it made me want to read more Greek mythology. Shop The Force Flavor Prompter's Taylor Shop Owner. Read the last book you bought or borrowed. Um, by the time I got to this book, it was February 1st, 1st, which was perfect because of Black History Month and all the books I wanted to read by... Um, black authors. I read black authors all the time, but I do reserve February for mostly um, books by African American or African authors. And I really, really, really wanted to read Remote Control by Nettie Okora for it is her newest book. It follows Sankofa, which is the adopted daughter of death and how um, and the day she forgot her name. Her She was born Fatima um, and there's a big event that happens and she forgets what her name is and she becomes Sankofa. And it follows her as she navigates what this means um and these new powers that she may have and what that means um this book is so powerful i loved sankofa i felt so sorry for her i love the writing in here it is just amazing how nadia gorefor can make these books that are just this this <laughs> Like, this is such a tiny book, and it is only 152 pages, 53 pages, and it was just so amazing. I could not put it down at all. The ending was nowhere near what I expected, but it was so much better. The writing is amazing. Sankofa is such a wonderful character, and the portrayal of Africa in this, like, I loved the... Um, I love the imagery that we get in this book, the language. Um, I read it physically, but I did listen to some of it on audio because it is on script right now. And honestly, once I put it on audio, I think I couldn't even go back to reading it physically because the audio is just so amazing. I gave this five out of five stars and I love Nettie. I do need to finish Venti as well. I'm going to try to squeeze that in February. I have so many other books to get to, but I need to finish that since it's the last book in the series. And then I honestly plan on getting to um, Who Fears Death because her writing is just so amazing. The final prompt in the Medievalathon is Fashion Trend Center. Prettiest book on your shelf. Now again, I cheated a little bit. I have so many beautiful books on my shelf, but... I needed to finish having my home. I have been stalling reading this book for so long. Um, the reason why is, as I said earlier, I am not the biggest detective. Like, I don't really like detective stories. And the first book in this series, Bluebird, Bluebird, it took me a little bit to get into. But halfway through the book, I was engrossed in the story. I absolutely loved it by the end. I gave it a four out of five stars. Uh, but the beginning was tough to get into. 
So I got this book immediately when it came out because I love the ending of Bluebird Bluebird. The problem with detective stories is, for me, they don't follow the exact same storyline as the first one, right? Because with most detective stories, there's a new case everywhere, every book. Because of that, when I got to this book, I psyched myself out and I told myself, what if it's not as good as the first one? And I started it, read two pages, put it down and picked something else up. This month, I made myself read it. And by chapter two, I was extremely hooked. And I don't know why I just didn't read it in the first. I'm, I'm actually happy I didn't because I wouldn't have had it to read this month. This author, Attica Lock, is just so amazing. I just ordered um, Pleasantville, I think is the book that I'm going to read next by her. Um, I think it's Pleasantville, Pleasantville, but she has Blackwater Rising, which I heard was amazing and won the Women's Prize for Fiction. Um, and one thing about me is I do follow the Women's Prize. I cannot wait for March 10th for the long list to be announced because I do plan on reading um, at least the short list this year. Um, but she has The Cutting Season. I just got shocked by something. It says she was writer and producer most recently for When They See Us, an amazing show on Netflix about um, five young men who were wrongfully accused of raping a woman and how it affected them, their struggle with clearing their name and being convicted at a young age. I think they were 15 and 16, some being sent to adult prison, some being sent to juvenile hall. Um, and their struggle with having to register as a sex offender and how this affected their life um, while they were innocent. Like, and it was clear that they was innocent. They were truly just set up to take the fall for a crime that they didn't commit because someone in the office wanted to close the case. Um, very heartbreaking. Made me so mad. I watched that with my boys and it was just so heartbreaking to watch them sit there and try to understand. Um at the ages that they are, how this could happen. And it, it really scared them so bad. But it was really, um, it was really a, a moment for us that I didn't think I was ready for, but they took it so well. And I, I just love watching that movies with, with my boys. Um, but she also writes Little Fires Everywhere, which I'm actually now gonna have to check out because I did not know that. Uh, but these books follows a character named Daring. He is the first Black Ranger or the only Black Ranger in Texas. The first book takes place around 2016. And this one is, yeah, 2016. So the first book takes place maybe about 2014, 2015. It's right around this time. So maybe 2016 too. Um, and this particular book, the Darren has to go to an area in Texas where there is still a heavy racism presence and he has to go find, um, he has to go assist the detective in that town to find a missing boy, a missing nine-year-old boy. The problem is that missing nine-year-old boy is the son of one of the um, Aryan brothers, which is a made up group of racist men, basically. Um, but they were based off of real life um gangs type groups that really do exist in Texas still. Um, but the Aryan Brotherhood and this one is a made up version of those groups. Basically, one of the leaders of that is in jail for murdering, um, brutally murdering a black man for no reason. And his son is now missing and daring the only black ranger is being sent to go help find his son and it follows him try to find this little boy in a town where nobody really likes him because he's black. Also, his internal struggle with, do I even really want to find this boy? Because what if he turns out like his dad? So amazing. First of all, it's it, her characters are realistic. This will make you angry, but it will make you think also about people and how the way they they were raised and their parentage and their history affects who they are and can people change can people become better than their past or are we all just a product of the families and the beliefs that we were born into i love this book everyone should read it it's again short it is amazing and i cannot re wait to read more by attic a lot with all those books, though, for Medieval Athon, I was able to climb up the rank to Princess, um, and I was able to complete.
completes my profession of being a seamstress, which I'm excited about because I've participated in three, all three rounds of medieval medieval adon and i never get all my problems done this was the first time and i'm actually i'm super excited so that is it for this video thank you guys for watching please like and subscribe if you like this content and let me know what you plan on reading for black history month in february and if you read any of the books that i talked about today please leave me a comment down below telling me what you thought of them have a wonderful day bye